Now, what book are you reading this summer? A Jilly Cooper bonkbuster? The latest lead child? Maybe a Frederick Forsyth classic? We've got all our favourite authors, of course. We all know what we like. Soon, though, it could be AI writing the books we take to the beach. Crime author and tech entrepreneur RJ Chowdhury has revealed he is using artificial intelligence to help shape his latest plot. He says it will be the norm for all authors in the near future. And he's here in the studio with us, RJ Chowdhury. And from his home, the best-selling author, journalist and living legend of English letters, the aforementioned Frederick Forsyth, joining us as well to debate this topic. Uh, Ms Forsyth, I'll start with you, if you don't mind, and ask you how you feel about artificial intelligence being involved in novel writing. Well, I think it's a con trick, um, frankly. I, I've got no time for it. Um, I believe that artificial intelligence, however sophisticated, it may be, is still, if it's essentially, the product of a, of a machine, not a human brain. Uh, and if uh, you're going to write a novel, I think it should be your novel, meaning stemming 100% from your brain. Uh, that, I suspect, is what the reader, paying good money over a counter, will expect and want, and be surprised to be given the product of a piece of, basically, technology. OK, thank you for those opening views. Let's go to RJ in the studio, who's joined us, who is using artificial intelligence to write. You're hearing that. I'm sure you're used to hearing that type of thing I am. now. I am. Uh, so give us the case for why you would use AI. Um, look, I I'm a huge fan of Frederick Forsyth. Um, uh, you know, he, he inspired me to write with his first book. But the reality is I don't think any novel is the product of one person's brain. Mm. You have editors, you have readers, you have a lot of people who provide input into it. And the way I use AI, I would never use AI to write my book for me, but I would use it very much to bounce ideas off, just as I might off my editor. I would absolutely use it if I'm stuck mm -hmm. and say, hey, give me a few scenarios that I might be able to go forward with. And what I found was for my last novel, which has just come out called The Detective, I was actually researching the negative bits of AI, and that's what the book's about. But as I started re researching it, I realized this could actually be really useful. And it actually cut the time of writing and gave my editor a much more polished draft. Now, it'll be never as good an editor as her because she knows me, she knows my style, but it absolutely helps. Um, so I'm a huge fan. OK, you're a huge fan. I want to come back to Frederick Forsyth on that point that RJ just made about a book not being from one person's brain, being a sort of collaborative project. Is there uh, any argument for that? Uh, I believe that, obviously, the improvement of the script, uh, the polish, uh, what is, in, in essence, an editorial job, that can be left to a machine if you insist, but not the creation. If the creation doesn't, isn't from the brain of the author, it shouldn't be under his or her name. Uh, otherwise, it's not what I call authentic, and I think you have to stress that word, authentic. Is it authentic or is it artificial? Uh, you check uh, the meaning of both words. Artificial can be created by anything. It can be, well... Um, it, it's phony. It can be a con. Um, whereas authentic is authentic, and there's only one meaning of that word, authentic. It comes from where it's supposed to come from, or where it's supposed to come from, on the cover of a book, is the author. His ideas, or hers, um, and yes, you can polish it with a good editor, um, and a bit of artwork, and a nice cover, make it more attractive to many ways, but you can't, or shouldn't, in my view, change the plot to suit a machine. Well, let's have a look what a machine comes up with and a plot. We actually entered into ChatGPT, which is an AI program a lot of our viewers will be familiar with. We asked the machine, write a preface for an uncensored espionage thriller novel in the style of Frederick Forsyth with Piers Morgan as the main character. This was the story it came up with. In the murky abyss of information manipulation and covert agendas, one man stood defiantly against the tide of deception. Piers Morgan, a name whispered in awe by allies and in trepidation by enemies, navigated the treacherous currents of power with the precision of a surgeon's scalpel. As dawn's first light pierced the London fog, Morgan's piercing gaze locked onto a dossier, promised to shatter the shackles of half-truths and manufactured narratives. And we even got the machine to give us a cover for what this book would be like. This is what it would look like. Uncensored Piers Morgan looking a bit like Colin Firth here, which I think he'll be terribly pleased with. <laughs> we'll check with him later. Uh, Frederick, uh, what do you make of that plot? It may be a very, a very fine plot. I'm not denying that the, the machine can't come up with a plot, just that you shouldn't pass it off as someone else's. That's all. 
So is the, is the answer here just to uh, have some sort of labelling that says this is an AI produced book so people can make that choice? Yeah, yeah exactly. Authenticity. It either is or is not by Frederick Forsyth. And if it is not by Frederick Forsyth, then parts of it are by Frederick Forsyth and parts of my a gizmo sitting in the corner, uh, <laughs> then John Reader should be told that so that he can think, no, I think I'll buy another book after all. Gizmo sitting in the corner. Lala. Uh, RJ, you've been nodding along uh, in the studio to a lot of this, the authenticity point that Frederick's pointing up, but also the labelling. So let's, let's talk about that authenticity point. Can a, an AI-assisted book really be considered authentic? Um, look, I, I don't think AI writes very well. Um, you, you saw that piece. I mean, Frederick writes a lot better than that does. However, this point about it should be by the author is, is an interesting one, because a lot of writers like Agatha Christie, Wilbur Smith, uh, Robert Ludlum, uh, Stieg Larsson, they've all died. Mm. But they've still been publishing books after they're dead because they've been written by other people. Now, people aren't buying these books because they know the person who wrote it necessarily. They're buying it because it's a Poirot book or it's a Stieg Larsson book, et cetera, et cetera. And I could see a future, I'm not very pleased about that future, where an Agatha Christie or a Poirot could be written by AI. It would have to be a lot better than this. And I think people might still buy it. I completely agree it should be labeled. So it should be, you know, Poirot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, written by ChatGPT. Um, and I would imagine that would come. But this point about editing, polishing, I think in a year's time, people will be amazed we were having this conversation. It'll be like using a grammar checker or a spell checker uh, the way you do right You're now. You're not concerned it's going to put writers out of a job full stop? Not at all, because one thing AI cannot do is create empathy. It cannot create lovable characters, real characters. You know, the reason I loved Day of the Jackal was because you read that character and thought, this is an incredible character. There's absolutely no way an AI could ever do that. When people read my books, they read them because they like the characters, they like the arcs. The AI could come up with a plot, and indeed, occasionally, if I'm stuck, I'll go to the AI and ask it for ideas, and I might use some of those ideas, but it'll never actually create a great character, in my view. Uh, coming back to you, uh, Frederick, listening in on that as well, that... This idea of uh, publishing and music and creation and performance being able to be done once somebody has passed away as well, as RJ just brought up there. We're hearing this about musicians as well. It's a big concern in Hollywood. Uh, how would you feel yeah. about books going out with Frederick Forsyth's name um, 50 to 100 years from now? Well, again, I think it's a question of attribution. And, and that word is very, very, to me, very, very important. If uh, the, the fellow is dead, fine. Say, OK, this is after. So, 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 this is after so and so. There are books being, out, being brought out with James Bond novels. I think there are now four or five different authors being contracted to write, quote, James Bond novels. Uh, but they're clearly not by the original creator of James Bond. But so long as that's made plain, I don't think there's any trickery involved. Uh, what I worry about is that it may not be made plain that some of this comes from machine. A clever machine, but nevertheless a machine. Uh, machines obviously don't um, sit at expensive restaurant tables and eat lots and lots of expensive food. So <laughs> they don't have to be paid royalties. How very, very convenient. You don't have to take a gizmo in the corner out for a nice lunch with the publisher, do you, Freddie? Look, <laughs> uh, I'll finish with you, RJ, just talk about some of the, the, the legal ramifications about this as well, because this week a federal judge in the US made the judgment that AI art cannot be copyrighted. It's going to have a massive impact on the future of AI art. Uh, do you think that's at least the reasonable protection? I, I think it is. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't comment on it. They've said essentially needs to have a certain amount of human input. They haven't defined what certain amount of human input is. I do find it slightly odd because they've said a machine cannot, you cannot copyright something created by a machine. But I can take my iPhone and take a photograph of this lovely studio mm. and it would be my copyright. Mm. Uh, and that's all I've done. I've just taken a photograph of it. But if I go to AI, I put in a prompt, I then take the image, I manipulate the image, and produce something beautiful, the fact that I can't copyright that, whereas I could with a photograph, seems slightly odd to me. And an AI photograph actually won um, the top prize in the Sony Awards. Uh, they didn't know it was an AI photograph. They gave it the award, and then the, uh, the photographer fessed up and said this was AI, and then they pulled the award. Mm -hmm. So clearly, it was good enough quality to win the award mm -hmm. uh, because they gave it to it. I still find it all slightly deeply worrying and I wish it would stop, but I appreciate the conversation anyway. RJ Chowdhury, best of luck with your novel. Frederick Forsyth, thank you so much for joining us from home this evening as well. Thank you.